Attention, due to the nature of the films discussed, the Civil Gore podcast may contain adult language and themes. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 73 of the Civil Gore podcast. I'm your host, Tim. Hey, and this is Brian, and this is... Uh, what we like to call a Ken episode. We're going to prep you in advance. It's really short. And so um, we'll see you all next week. Yeah. No, just kidding. Which means it's probably going to be like two hours. <laughs> right, right, yeah. No, no, it's just it's funny. It's just because of, I guess, scheduling and, you know, uh, Tim didn't do his usual watching and, and reading of 52 things. And <laughs> and and there just was not a lot of first chop stuff. And I think we covered so much last week that this week was a, a light load. And I know, you know what, I... Like Steve Cohn out there is probably saying, "What do you mean? I sent you like thirty things." He did I, I'm a lot. I, I can't. I'm, a lot of it wasn't. I mean, some was horror, some wasn't, and it was so much to go through. But I think I tried to get. We tried to get the the big uh, mainstream stuff out there on our first job. It's not very long today, but some good ones. Yeah, and plus it was Labor Day's weekend, and so I guess we kind of took a little bit of a more of a break. <laughs> After yeah. our vacation, yeah. we're well, really we got a lot of stuff up. coming up. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming. We still got we still got to work on our our October horror challenge for you guys. Um, because obviously we don't want to just do the same one we did last year. So right. I mean, there may be some re- repeats. There could be some some fun ones in there that we we kept. But uh, maybe we'll do we'll definitely try and get some different ones this year. Yeah. So let's get right into our little short first chop. So, Brian, I did not watch my Alphabet Project movie this week. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. I really failed everybody. But the thing was, we had <laughs> we had so many kids over <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> it was it's been like Tim's daycare over here. So uh, yeah, we've had all kinds of fun with the kids and stuff. So uh, that that's understandable. We we yeah, just got yeah. busy. It's hard to watch horror movies with kids around. Yeah, and you know it's like you you, know, you always you always do so much during the week with stuff. So <laughs> it's like you you're allowed your own little break. I mean, it is Labor Day. You're supposed to take some time off. Yeah. Even well, though I saw I says I saw that you you spray washed a fence or something. Yeah. Or I'm uh, sorry, a shed. Yeah, I so, did uh, do that today. <laughs> uh, I, I did. Uh, I mixed a lot of fun with a lot of work this weekend, so it's not it wasn't too bad. But uh, I did work on a project. I did work on my backlog project. I uh, got the first commentary for Child's Play knocked out. Uh, I think there's three commentaries on that. Two of them are full length, and one of them is just selected scenes with Chucky doing the commentary, which is pretty funny. Uh, but oh, so I got nice. that first commentary knocked out. Great, great commentary. Uh, it had a couple of the actors um, and the guy. I'm sorry, I'm not don't have their names right in front of me, but the, the guy that basically invented Chucky, the guy that did all the uh, puppetry and stuff. So oh, okay, it was a really, cool, really cool. entertaining commentary. Um, Alex Vincent's on there. Uh, he oh, kind of does nice. his own commentary. He's not with the others in the room, but he kind of chimes in with stuff every now and again. So yeah, de- definitely well worth it. That child's play collection is just phenomenal. Oh, you know what? Speaking of that, this isn't on the rundown, but we should make a comment on it. So did you actually see that, so they kind of released a little tidbit of that Child's Play remake that the doll yes. is going to be. Oh, oh is it's that, terrible. It just that to so me bad. is is blasphemous. Though, so basically, for those who don't know, I mean, I think I, be- I believe I shared it on our social media accounts. But so they're basically saying that it's almost like picture like it's almost like Skynet took over Chucky. Basically, it's like a programming malfunction went bad or something. So no uh, Charles Lee Ray aspect of it. No, um, like kind of mystical type of thing. It's little purely a computer glitch, so to speak. If you want to push it down to that, and that is blasphemous <laughs> to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> the whole concept of this thing just sounds so ridiculously stupid. Yeah. I, I'm just so irritated by it. it. It's not. I would not be nearly as irritated if if Child's Play was a dead franchise. If we had not had yeah. a movie in years. If Chucky was long forgotten. Okay, then maybe I could see doing a reboot. But the the franchise is as busy now as it has ever been with the TV yeah. series and the movies. And, I mean, and really good movies. And a scare zone. And a, a scare, scare zone. zone. Yeah, I mean, and it's just yeah. irritating <laughs> that they're deciding to reboot a franchise that does not need rebooting right now. Right. It never did. It it almost went, as soon as it started to if it started to go a little funny, they 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 course corrected it mid franchise. 
better than actually most of the main franchise, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, Friday the 13th definitely went crazy. I mean, Chucky, yes, he has not been to space yet, but give him some time. <laughs> if I mean, but you know, even that would be, I think, kind of funny. Imagine he gets like caught up on, he accidentally gets caught into a uh, shuttle launch, <laughs> and then he goes up there. Well, the thing is, <laughs> okay, of... so let's say this new Child's Play comes out. Then now, what do you have? Two franchises with the same name competing yeah, in peril? It's just it, the the licensing and the rights thing in this is just so weird and bizarre to me. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I, and I, yeah, I just and, and you figure if like I mean you know they usually have I mean most film companies or a, any kind of a production company of any sort you must have people that comb social media to get early reactions early buzz buzzes and and comments and, and they must be seeing the the negative backlash I mean it's got to be giving them some cold feet there right I, I mean, don't know but I mean they still make new jigsaw movies and new ring movies and I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what they're thinking. Well, is. yeah. Well, I mean, at least with Jigsaw, it's like you know, you kind of just, you know, you're still continuing with what you have. You didn't reboot it, and even the sudden. rings, I guess, is the same. I mean, yeah, but, but I mean, it's not like I mean, I guess it's like if all of a sudden they did came out with like a, another Saw movie, and instead of like Jigsaw, it was like Bob Hammer or something, <laughs> <laughs> some weird name of of a new villain, you know, or something. It's like it's. Like why? Why are you like why tweak the formula that worked? I mean, I, I even if they here's the thing even the reboot is not a good idea to begin with. Like because you like for all the reasons we we named, we don't need to to beat it to death. But the thing is, at least I'd be like okay. At least if you kept the same mythology of it, to s- somewhat that it was a possessed criminal going in there. Don't, don't give me a computer. Uh, this is something that could have came out in eighty five. It was no adv- It went backwards. Yeah, that's what all the eighties movies were about evil computers and stuff i thought we yeah. were past all that yeah who think uh, yeah like what who thinks that that's going to be scary to you anymore no it's not <laughs> it's no like, it's like that dumb movie uh, i saw where the app went crazy or whatever i can't remember the name of it that was on netflix uh, oh it was just yeah, so yeah. lame i'm like oh just stop it's so yeah it, you're instantly dating your movie when you when you do crap like that it's just yeah uh, but anyway, yep. So sorry. So that wasn't even a uh, 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 that was an unannounced. I told you this but... show was going to be two hours long. Yeah, there we go. Oh we went God. off track. All right, get so... ready, Cody. It's it's a Cody episode. <laughs> no, they can't. so first up, uh, Fright Rags has an upcoming Halloween T-shirt collection. They're going to have both the 1978 and the 2018 versions of Halloween shirt designs. I'd really need to get some Fright Rag shirts. Oh yeah, so yeah. Cool. And I remember I bought some, and they, they come with the little card and everything. It's really cool. Yeah, I've got to get on that. I really need to order some before we go to Halloween Horror Nights. I need to, I need some shirts yeah. to wear down there. I don't really have. Well, them well we are working shirts. on ours. That's right. We yeah. Ju- Julie is hard at work on our uh, our cool shirt. I gave T- Tim a little teaser of a of a piece she worked on for it. And it is amazing. Already, that looks good. Yes, yeah, amazing. So this this is going to be fun. So hopefully, we'll have it in enough time where we can. Um, uh, I mean, I'm sure we will. We'll need it before the the show, but enough time to maybe like post it on social media so you guys can see. So that way, you can anyone happen to be down there, you'll look for Tim and I, and you can find us. Yeah, with our our sparkling original T-shirt, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, but but yeah. So what I like that I like about this is that you know they're really like they're just they're hammering it home that. You know, this is the Halloween now that, you you know, this is going to be the current Halloween, 1978's version and the 2018 version. And, you know, it's either, there's obviously um, a connection, you know, that we've we've heard it all before, how they're going to, you know, they're basically wiping out all the sequels, so to speak. And so that'll be cool, kind of cool that it seems like the merchandising is going right along with it. Yeah. <laughs> Although Universal decided to do a Halloween 4 house, which... <laughs> kind of now seems out of place <laughs> but it's still going to be a cool house i'm sure so yeah that's okay i mean i, I kind of yeah. like the idea we we'll always have the old ones but i kind of like yeah. the idea if they can really do this right i really like the idea of having a fresh reboot of the franchise that could continue forward right. without all the baggage that, that, that sounds cool to me so yeah and i'm sure if this thing does well which i can't imagine it not with all this buzz and all the excitement that that i'm sure they already have you know whether or not it it's a uh, it's been greenlit i'm sure they have an, a sequel idea already floating around so yeah i think they i think um I, I vaguely remember them talking about sequel ideas already yeah, I think I saw something where he said – where it was like some people said, oh, no, he said no sequel. But then it like contradicted itself when you read the article. Like David Gordon Green said, well, let's see how this one does and, and we'll go from there. And I love how that's just typical how people get all so um, 
So like they take one little fact and then they they go off on this crazy tangent on it. Perfect example. I read an article today that said that apparently as I know it's going to sound weird when I first started, but the, the, the Wicked movie that was coming out is been swapped now with the Cats movie and it's going head to head against Star Wars Episode Nine. And so the title of this article was Hollywood is not afraid of Star Wars anymore. <laughs> and I'm, so I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, okay. So you took a movie. Now, granted, I mean, I mean, I don't know many of them, but you know, there are people out there that are not Star Wars fans. Also, there are people there, even though that love Star Wars, just know that you know they want to go with their family, and seeing it opening night, and or possibly even opening weekend, is not feasible. But but hey, you know what? They still want to go see a big movie. So you ha- it's always good to almost have a secondary big movie come out the same weekend as another big movie. Yes, may- maybe it doesn't it doesn't uh, have a, a huge second uh, first week because of it, but it may have a better second week and vice versa. So it's 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 so funny how they took that stat and now have made it that Hollywood's not afraid of Star Wars anymore, and now every movie's gonna big movie is gonna compete with Star Wars. Oh God, Wars. I don't believe that for a it's, second. No, yeah, every I mean, studio is afraid of Disney. Every yeah. Studio. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's so ridiculous. But anyway, that was my point. Sorry, I went a little tan <laughs> off tan uh, off on a tangent there. But yeah, I mean, that, that's the point I'm making. It's like they took a quote by him saying, "Oh, let's see how it goes," because of course you're not gonna tip your hand on it and say, "Oh, we got a sequel ready," because then people start saying, "Oh, there's a sequel." Then this must happen, and then this must happen. Oh, and if there's and then you just get fan fiction and then fake rumors. I think they're playing it right. Yeah, good for him. Oh yeah, good for him. Let's see how. That's exactly what I would say. If they say, I mean, and and this is someone who wants Halloween movies till the day I die, <laughs> but still, I, I'm realistic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, next up, there's a new TV series coming out based off the novel The Swarm. This is an environmental thriller. I'm not really big on environmental thrillers, but this one sounds kind of cool. Yeah, are you are you now are you familiar with with the original book for this? I am not because... familiar with it. No, I'm not. Oh, see, and that's rare because Tim is Tim is usually up on on a lot of of uh you know great books and b- good horror things so it basically um what it is is that the game of thrones um executive producer frank i'm gonna butcher his name dolger or dolager but um anyway he, he's he's gonna be at the helm of this and so basically one of the uh the coolest uh the, the setup says the apocalyptic catastrophes of the day after tomorrow meet the watery menace of the abyss in this gripping scientifically realistic and utterly imaginative thriller so basically it says like whales begin sinking ships toxic eyeless crabs poison long island's water supply oh crap i'm in trouble <laughs> Oops. i just i just i must have scanned over that part interesting the, it says the north sea shelf collapses killing thousands in europe around the world countries are beginning to feel the effects of the ocean's revenge as the seas and their inhabitants begin a violent revolution against mankind this uh, to me this sounds awesome that sounds really cool and and it's like it says like I saw something about toxic jellyfish lobsters. Look out, Tom! And uh, <laughs> whales start attacking humans on the coast. It sounds like um, a so, Aquaman movie. Yeah, but it but it's like it says they're gonna they're beginning in 2019 is the, the production. All we know is we need to watch this. Is we're gonna have to have Steve Cohn watch this because if there's an octopus scene, oh yeah, he will be so terrified it'll be great for us. Well, I'm torn because <laughs> I typically don't like environmental thriller stuff because environmental stuff is too depressing in real life as it is so i don't i don't really like watching movies about True. environmental catastrophe cuz i'm like we're headed there anyway but at the same time i love underwater stuff and like yeah. evil monsters underwater anything underwater even if it's just jellyfish or lobsters attacking people De- i'm i'm on board with that so i'm definitely going to watch this oh yeah yeah this this will be something cool and plus if it's good special effects it'll be really neat like seeing a giant whale come out and do stuff That'll as opposed cool. to a non-giant whale <laughs> i know right like uh, yeah I'm, well, you, you know what i mean yeah like like i'm hoping they make it like moby dick size yeah. like super giant i should say yeah you know one of those yeah. kind of whales i know yeah those like little a jumbo whales shrimp don't do anything. You know, it's yeah run. jumbo shrimp yeah the, the little whales don't do much you know <laughs> you know they're just kind of sitting there waving yeah. uh the <laughs> last stuff in our first chop we have a new film the shed I first thought this might have been a sequel to The Barn. Yeah. And then, you know, but... Uh, well, the Candy Corn Scarecrow yeah. will not make another appearance on this podcast, Brian. Stop wishing for right. it. We ha- Well, what if it becomes a feature film, though? 
Like, what if it's one of our... our uh, oh, it was, our, right. That might have been on our leads. Kickstarter, huh? That's true. And what if it's, like, it happens to be the movie that that fits one of our October challenge uh, criteria? Oh, yeah. You see? I'm bringing it back. We are not dropping so, Candy Corn Scarecrow Speaking of yet. which, if you guys, if any of you out there want to dress up like the Candy Corn Scarecrow and tweet us a picture of it, oh, that would be yeah. awesome. Yes. I, we, I we might even to... send you a DVD for that. <laughs> yeah, you might have to get you might get a, a good prize for that. Who knows? But um, but anyway, so <laughs> so uh, anyway, with this one, uh, this one seems cool. So it's it's the uh, uh, Frozen and Hatchet, and not Frozen Disney. No, Frozen. Not Disney Frozen. The, no, Adam Green's Frozen and Hatchet produces a line on the shed. So it seems Frank Sabatella, director of Blood Knight, The Legend of Mary Hatchet, is back with the shed. Um, it stars Frank Whaley, Cody Castro, Sophia Happenin. So, and I guess I want to go up to her when I see her and say, what's happening? But uh, <laughs> t- Timothy Bottoms, one of my favorites from, of course, the movie Roller Coaster. Yes. Uh, J.J. Warren, Peter Block, and Corey Neal. And so it says, here's a lengthy synopsis from the sales agency. <laughs> but I'll read it since we have a short – We have a short we have time, time. Just first job. Yeah, we got some time to fit in. So it says, as an orphan living with this, his abusive grandfather, life sucks for Stan – but he's got it better than his best friend Dahmer, hmm. mm. <laughs> who he regularly ha- has to defend against the school bullies. And now their best friend Roxy, Stan's secret crush, has fallen in with the cool crowd who harass harass them daily. But these monsters, and that's in quotes, in Stan's daily world are nothing compared to the monsters of Stan's nightmare comes to life. When Stan finds a murderous creature of the night, has taken refuge in his backyard tool shed, and kills his grandfather... He can't go to the cops who will be likely to put him in foster care. Hmm. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So God. while Stan yeah, while Stan tries to battle the demon alone, Dahmer thinks it's the solution to their bully problems. If only they can lure the bullies to the shed. Will it bond the friends, tear them apart, or just get them killed? Sometimes monsters turn regular folks into heroes, and sometimes they just turn them into different monsters. But I got to tell you, it's a nice nice uh Kind of catchy premise to it. it makes me. It definitely intrigues me. Yeah, it seems like I got there's a little bit of this sh- little Stranger Things vibe in there to me with the the poster. Where, looks they really had that cool. little yeah. The, what did the, the Dark Tony? What was that little dark? The little uh, creature that he had in season two. Oh Dark-tanion yeah, Tanyan or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. like that where he was like hiding in the the, <laughs> the, uh, box. the poster to me reminds me a lot of like those seventies and eighties paperback covers. Yeah, it's got that cool yeah. font. With it. the red behind the bar, yeah, yeah. it looks the the artwork for it is is fantastic. I mean, that's something that like if we just saw that and it just said like coming soon or something, I'd be like, whoa, what is this? You know, it's like they may sell uh, a lot, get a, and gain a lot of interest just on this artwork alone. Right. Yeah. So, it looks it's really. I mean, I don't know what the movie's like, but kudos to the marketing department because that's a cool. Poster. Yeah. Yeah, I I would give this. I would definitely give this a look. I mean, you know, it's hey. You know we like we like sheds. Now we, <laughs> yes, theme park you know, fans. That's a theme, theme park inside, fans theme park out there. Yeah. Joke. Well, now we know what what the, what's in the shed. Yeah. Hashtag. You know, so, well. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time for our disc memberment. Wait, no, please, God, no, don't come up. <laughs> so. First up, I had a couple of kind of one-offs. I didn't want to go through all the directors and stuff of these because you know these already. These are uh, Christine is the right. is turning thirty-five. So Sony is putting out a thirty-fifth anniversary four K edition of Christine uh, remastered in Dolby Atmos sound. So this is a really cool disc if you have the home theater set up for it. I do not, unfortunately. Oh. I do not have a four K TV. Yeah, what is what is Dolby Atmos though? So Dolby Atmos is for people who have way more money than I do. It's basically a seven dot <laughs> one system. So oh, okay. you know your okay. your tra- traditional five dot one, which is what I've got, is the two right. Front, yeah, that's what I have. Okay. The center, the two rear, right? And then you've got seven dot one, which is two front, center, and then I think two middle. Oh, okay. And then okay. two rear. The if you want to do true Dolby Atmos, I think there are four overhead speakers. So you could have like a helicopter flying at you and literally go over your head. So you've got actually speakers in the ceiling and then coming back around. So it it gets crazy. If you were doing true Dolby Atmos, I mean, you're, you've are you got a nice setup. <laughs> it's way more than I can afford. 
It would be cool if they started putting like um I mean I know kinda like the subwoofer can can kind of do this effect for you, but imagine now the next thing it'll have like a speaker in the floor. So like a like a movie like Evil Dead when she's coming out of the hatch and the thing, it'll feel like it's well, they do know, like, have like a, uh they do have the vibrating things you could put in the seats that oh, true. that are triggered off the that. base. So yeah, you could do something like that. Uh, but that that I totally want one of those. By the way, it was terrible. I remember Mike and E B on Coaster Radio years ago talked about that with the Back to the Future set that came out, and it has so the Back to the Future ride that bonus uh, footage that came on there actually linked with that uh, D box system. You could get it at your home, so you could literally actually have the ride, I guess, sync to the uh, to the to to the the D box chair. Oh, that's which cool. would have been my dream because essentially you're getting the that's the best you can get as a theme park ride in your in your home and but uh yeah so i remember they were teasing mike he's and like eb was saying to mike oh mike as soon as you saw that d box you know you had to buy <laughs> that and you wanted to get that uh that set up yeah so that would be my dream to have one of those things Ugh, yeah i would love to that? see this uh this remaster in 4k because it supposedly it looks phenomenal i looked at a little review of it but uh oh nice yeah i i think next year is my 4k my next tv will be 4k They're so I just, cheap I'm, now oh my god yeah ridiculously it really cheap. is i mean wh- even on a podcaster salary we can afford yeah i mean and i'm talking like a <laughs> decent tv i'm not talking like the whatever the cheapest brand at walmart special i'm talking about like decent good brand 4k tvs like 55 inch i'm not talking like 40 inch screens here like well under a thousand dollars i paid oh yeah for my first plasma that i bought which was a 42 this is granted this was many many years ago but i paid 2300 dollars for that tv and yeah. my second tv which is the one i have now which is a 50 inch plasma i was well over a thousand yeah i think i like paid i think for this one i have which is a you know, when the LCD, it's like, it was like, um, uh, you know, it was something like 1800 and it's just so funny nowadays, like the 3D's got phased out completely almost. And now you have like, it's 4Ks, I think. And I guess it's just such a, they've mastered the technology to make it so that they, such affordable technology. This is great. Yeah. I mean, I saw like a 55 inch Samsung for like 600 bucks, 4K. And that's, I'm like, are you kidding that's me? That's crazy. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. I mean, you could almost get a TV for as much as you would like the, your 4K Xbox or PlayStation. I know <laughs> it's it's, ri- it's ridiculous. I think yeah, I'm thinking next year might be my my jump to 4K. I've been trying to hold off because I was going to wait until I had enough to get a new full home theater system, but they're so ridiculously cheap now. It's like I just yeah. I mean that's that's nothing, but. Not that it's nothing, but it's still compared to what we used to pay for those. Oh my ridiculous. god! Yeah, for 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 when you, yeah, whenever you had to get the, I mean, there's still those old LED versions. Oh, there's there's a high high. Yeah, I mean, you can you still can spend still a lot of money on a TV if you want yeah. to. But but I mean, yeah, if you just want a, a good solid 4K TV that the average consumer will be fine with, there's there you can everyone can get one basically now. Oh, and pro tip: if you really want to save on TVs. Obviously, Black Friday and stuff, they always have some good deals. But in March is usually when the new models come out. So a lot of times you can get the older, the last year's version, which are perfectly fine for really cheap around March. I I used to buy all my TVs in March because of that. Yeah, it's it's like cars, too. You know, whenever the new ones come out, you can get a – they need to get those last year models off the lot. You can find yourself a good deal. Yeah. So somehow we turned into a home theater podcast. Yeah, I don't know. And next on on, uh, (laughs) – QVC, <laughs> we're going to be selling. Uh, so uh, selling yeah, so if you have watch. 4K, go grab that Christine edition. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And then uh, if you are in the Halloween spirit, Fye, right? We don't have Fyes around here. Uh, they we, do, I, we have one, I think, near me now, still, but that's, yeah. I never go in. I think it's in the mall. So I think. yeah, they're uh, releasing a steelbook edition of the original Halloween. But if you need yet another copy of Halloween, there yeah. you go. At this point already, I mean, even I have so many versions of it. I, I, I until something comes out that you know, and I don't mean just an aesthetic new version. Like if they really had like new footage and stuff or anything like that, then I would get a new version because of course I'd buy any version that that comes out along with new actual material and content, but yeah. not not just aesthetic. I don't need that. Uh, especially you're just buying a case at this point. Yeah, I don't think there's I mean, anything new in here. Um, yeah. The uh, next one up is The Witching Season from 2015. It's being released by The Witching Season Films. <laughs> so, 
I wa- Jay, I wonder how I made, what other films they, yeah. they have. It's probably the only one. Uh, this one was created by Michael Bailiff. I don't, I'm not sure who all directed this because this is actually an anthology series. Uh, this, this is like season one. This is the one, Brian, oh, I watched okay, on Amazon okay. Prime a while back. Oh, I, that's why this seemed familiar. Yeah. yeah, I remember you talking about this. Okay. Um, some of the stars are James Morris, Jordan Swenson, Samuel Morris. Fueled by nostalgia, this anthology of short horror films tells original tales of terror set during the Halloween season. And as if I recall, this one is very indie, uh, very low budget. But overall, I believe I enjoyed it. And I really liked, the one thing I really liked about it is they use a lot of old vintage Halloween decorations in the series. And sometimes they use them from short to short, which is fine. I, I loved seeing those. Like, that was my favorite part of this whole anthology was just looking at all the halloween decorations so it really does capture that kind of vintage halloween feel so that's a uh, one good thing i can say about it so uh yeah check that one out you got it it may still be on prime uh it's been a while back since i watched it i want to say yeah i think i might have sca- uh might have but i think it might still be in my um because i think when you talked about the first time if i put it into my watch list I think I might have seen it. Yeah. <laughs> scrolled through. Next up, The Seventh Sign from 1988. This is a Shout Factory release directed by Carl Schultz, starring Demi Moore, Michael Bean, and oh. Jurgen Prochnow. One of my favorite names ever. Oh, yeah, that's a great name. Uh, Abby Quinn is eagerly awaiting childbirth, but is haunted by dreams where she suffers a miscarriage. When she decides to rent a room to a mysterious stranger, she realizes a chain of events that will unleash the end of humanity. Now, knowing that film, you know, I, I know what you know how it goes, and it, it's pretty good. It's really good. And but if you think, <laughs> if you read that description, it seems like it's like two different movies. It's like it starts by she haunt, dreams haunted by miscarriage, and then all of a sudden she decides to rent a room, and now here comes the apocalypse. Yeah, you know, it's like that's a weird movie. I I don't think I have seen this movie since uh, 1989 or 1988. <laughs> Whatever yeah, I think well, I, I probably I think I saw it when it was on uh, cable, like when it's first run on cable, and that was it. But. Yeah, it does have a. Uh, I think it's got five interviews here and some TV spots, so it's not bare bones. So if you enjoy that movie, there's uh, quite a few good interviews on here. And I, and it has to have one of the best uh, writers' names ever, W. W. Wicket. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Wasn't Wicket one cool. of the Ewoks? He was Wicket K- Wicket W. Warwick. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, yeah, so go uh, there goes my Star Wars uh, nerdium. So, and of course, it was Star, you know, it was Warwick Davis, yeah. which was uh, so Mr. Leprechaun himself. So, yeah. so we we tied it back into horror. Yeah, we tied that. it back in. I was I was I was on that. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, next up, another uh, early '90s classic, Brain Dead from 1990. Again, another Shout Factory release, directed by Adam Simon. And this is what amazed me about this movie. Starring Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton and Bud Court in the same movie. Because, you know, a lot of wow. people get Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton mixed up. Right. It was like, what was the one that Saturday Night Live skit did? Like, um, uh, Derbit Mulrooney and... Uh, yes, the other guy. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Yeah. Which now I can... Dermot McDermott. Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's like this. It's Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton. Yeah, I've always yeah. heard Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton mixed up. Just like Jeff Bridges and Jeff Daniels. That would be someone great. I mean, I mean, of course, uh, rest in peace, uh, Bill Paxton. But imagine it would be great if someone could have done like one of those on a Funny or Die or something would do a bit where they place like you know they'd have to obviously do someone that pretending to be you know impersonating Bill Paxton. But they put the Bill Paxton in the Bill Pullman roles and Bill Pullman in the Bill yeah. Paxton roles. <laughs> I think I swear I feel like they have done that at some point. Did they? At some point, yeah, years ago, I feel like they, or at least I think Bill Pullman made fun of himself getting mixed up with Bill Paxton somehow. I'm about to look that up. Yeah, so if anybody remembers anything with Bill Pullman talking about getting mixed up with Bill Paxton, let us know, because I, I swear I remember something like that. Yeah. I would love, though, imagine Bill Paxton took over Bill Pullman's role in Independence Day, though. They'll be like, Mr. President, the aliens are coming. You're stewed, but what? You know, like, <laughs> that would be great, you know? We got it. We should, we should just edit it together ourselves. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Get, forget, forget, like, looking for this. But we'll just do it ourselves. This is That's proof it. they're not the same person. Um, yeah. <laughs> in a showdown of man versus machine, child's play. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, in a showdown of man versus machine, Martin plunges into a chaotic nightmare trying to save his mind from the megalomaniacal corporation. So, <laughs> uh, really good cover, though. That's always got a good cover. It's got the face yeah. coming off, kind of like face, face off. Yeah, uh, kind of thing, but. <laughs> yeah that, that's all this needs is Nick Cage to come in there. <laughs> that would be good. 
Oh, and guess what we have here? American Uh-oh. guinea pig sacrifice. Oh my god. It's another, so this has got to be a sequel, correct? I, I don't know if it's a sequel or prequel. It's another in the uh, classic American guinea pig series. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm gonna say whenever it has that subtitle like "sacrifice," oh it's god. usually they wait till that's usually like yeah. the third or fourth or fifth yeah. film in the in the series. But oh so. my gosh! So this was from 2017, released by Unearth Films, directed by Poison Rouge. What? I thought you might have messed up and put the per- release company in where it was directed. No, that's by, the but, actual director. But you did not. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna love this name, starring Flora. Oh, yeah. Gia- Gia- uh, see, I uh, told you. Flora Gianna Tassio. Gianna wow. Tassio. And a Robert Scorza. So this is a great synopsis. Here we go. Haunted by the death of his father and other psychological traumas, Daniel returns to the home where he was raised. Faced with intense emotional scars as well as physical, which are realized by the years of self-harm depicted by the cuttings adorning his body, he enters the bathroom to begin a journey of self-exploration. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, self-mutilation and quite possibly self-enlightenment. Prepared mm. only with. I wonder what enlightenment is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, prepared only with three white candles and some crude instruments. <laughs> I don't get this. this? Um, <laughs> Daniel oh. attempts to beckon the embrace of the goddess Ishtar to assist him on his self illumination. Oh. I I don't know so, what these movies are. <laughs> so so I take it that this is not, this is a metaphorical guinea pig. This is not an actual. I'm hoping like, pet so. Guinea pig. Because I see no mention of a of a of a, a rabid or rogue pet no, or something yeah. in here. I don't know. This is this yeah. is so. It sounds like a really weird series of films. Yeah, if you took out the sacrifice, so it sounded like something that might have been on like Nickelodeon cartoons or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I think the sacrifice. Yeah, so I guess he's literally like the the sort of a guinea pig as that, but yeah. not an actual. I don't know. So object. if you want to see a guy explore himself in the bathroom. Yes. That's the movie for you. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we do have a really big theatrical release yes. this week. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, The Nun from yes. The Conjuring The Nun, the evil nun. Uh, this one's directed by Corin Hardy, starring Damien Bichir? Bichir? Tha- yeah, I is think it so. Thaisa Farmiga? It's, it's... I call her Thaisa Farmiga. I hope I'm not butchering it, because. Yeah. But I don't know. It's a cool name. I, I just don't yeah. know exactly how to pronounce it. And Jonas Bloquet, Bloquet, yeah, uh, a priest with a haunted past and a novice on the threshold of her final vows are sent by the Vatican to investigate the death of a young nun in Romania and confront a malevolent force in the form of a demonic nun. So, of course, this ties into the whole Conjuring series. It's kind of a backstory on the evil nun uh, Uh, in that series. So this one sounds awesome. I really want to go see this one. I like yeah, that. no, it, it looks creepy as hell. The trailer for this thing. Yeah, I hope they don't. They, get, they hope they didn't give away all the goods because it's that one where it looks like she's coming at you when she comes at the side. They show. I hope this is not like they, that's not the biggest scare in there, and I hope there's some other good ones. Yeah, but, um, I've tried to avoid watching the trailers. I did watch it when it first came out, but I haven't watched it since then. I haven't watched any yeah. any more versions of it so i'm gonna to try to stay away from it hopefully i get to see that one. i i hope if this does well and they do the sequel it's like none two second to none or something you know it's like they did <laughs> well somebody already did a uh sister act parody of it i saw oh i saw that where it's like half whoopi goldberg half, yeah but yeah half even half whoopi goldberg i thought that was a little bit of nonsense myself <laughs> but, yeah. that was well uh yeah. Okay. Sorry, get... it's it's a force of habit. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to use, oh, you, you stole that one. You see it? I sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I snuck it in. I I, I figured you you would be way up, <laughs> uh, higher in the, uh, the 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 brow of humor there. I just kind of uh, I go to cheap puns. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, it's time for our main feature, and this week we are starting our Back to Goo series because yes. we're all Tales from the Crypt fans, so we make bad puns. But, of course. Uh, yeah. So, of course, it's back to school season. My kids are back to school. They're actually loving school this year for some reason. My, In fact, oh, my daughter nice. complained she didn't get enough homework. So what? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to last very long. Yeah. You, you won't you won't ever say those words again. <laughs> yeah, I was like, enjoy which... that now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so we decided to do all films this month related to school or set in schools or yeah, you know, and there's tons of them. A lot of horror. Movies. Oh my god! If you think about it, yeah. a lot of horror victims are high school or college kids. So of course, there's a right, lot of school right. stuff. I tried to go with one that was like really set in school. Like you could say, 
Carrie or some of those. Well, I mean, Carrie maybe more than most, but a lot of these are tanks. Yeah, Scream even, like, has some, yeah. you know, has a big school element, the first one at least. But you, know, you have so. some that are kind of tangentially related just because the characters are going to school. And then right. you have some that are, like, the school is a actual main feature. And this one, I think, kind of tied in more with the school actually being a main feature. Uh, this one is Return to Horror High from 1987, directed by Bill Froelich. Froelich. Starring Lori mm-hmm. Leffen, Brendan Hughes, Alex Rocco, and a bunch of cameos that we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a lot. So, a few years ago, a mysterious serial killer caused panic on Crippen High School. The killer was never caught. A movie company, Cosmic Pictures, has decided to make a feature movie about these events on location at the now-abandoned school. Since members of cast and crew disappear without a trace, it seems as if history is repeating itself. And one of the reasons I picked this movie, Brian, is it's one of the first movies on VHS, horror movies, I should say, on VHS that I ever remember renting. Uh, This was back when I was really getting into VHS rentals, and I had gone through Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween series, and I was looking, basically getting any horror movie I could find, and I loved the cover of this one. The cover of this one, if you remember, is just a white background and it's got a skeleton in a cheerleader uniform yep (laughs) and i just one of the all-time classics (laughs) yeah it was one of the all-time classic vhs covers and that's what got me to rent this movie and i remember watching it with my brother on vhs so that i had not seen that movie since that day when i had rented that movie so um it was kind of cool to come come back and revisit it it's a very interesting film because it's very meta it's it's got a lot of uh, it's very self-aware of so it kind of pokes fun at slasher movies even as it is a slasher and has a bunch of like this movie will totally mess with your head oh my god every time yeah every time you think it's something happening but yet it it doesn't like it like goes back and forth and and time periods without any kind of like screen ripple so you don't even know where they are sometimes yeah but. because the whole movie is told in flashback somewhat because what happens is uh, you find out that there was this murder on campus, uh, on the school campus. And then at the start of the movie, a, another set of murders has happened, but everybody's in different pieces, so they don't actually know how many victims yeah. there are. And yeah, so then you start great. getting flashbacks of how all these people were killed, and that makes up the bulk of the movie. But on top of that, they're making a movie about the murder. So when you see a kill, you don't know if it's them making the movie of the kill or if it's the actual kill or, and, yeah. and there's oh my and there's even dream sequences mixed in there yeah and there's there's and there's a lot of like fake outs and and then it's like and it's like there's some you can't tell if then you there's think you think there's it's a flashback but then it's not and it's like it's you're like i was literally watching this i'm like I, like part of me was like i i might do i need to rewind this wait a minute did i miss something to it but it like but at the same time it's like it's part of its charm i think that it is so like just like wacky you know it's like yeah you kind of have to roll with it because i I was sitting here thinking like i can't follow this how in the world did i try to follow this when i was 15 or whatever when i saw it right (laughs) i would never be able to follow like i remember seeing it years ago and it's funny it was a it was i can't remember the scene that did it but i just remember i know i've seen it probably on cable a long time ago or something I don't know whether it was it was something with the with the Marie, Marie McCormick's thing, which we'll we'll get to, or just it was just uh, one of the, the kills or something. I just know that like you know it was like something seemed very familiar when I watched. I was oh I rem- I, I kind of remember this now. I thought I had not. I wasn't sure if I had seen it until I watched it. But but yeah, now that you say that, I'm like, what the heck was I thinking back then? I don't even know. You know, it's like how do you follow this? It's interesting because it came in on the tail end, I guess, sort of the later era of the slashers because it's 1987. So right. you get to the end of the decade. So enough time had enough of those had come out that it, it could start poking fun of it at itself. And one thing that's funny is Return to Horror High. There, there is no original Horror High that it is connected to. I believe there is a movie called Horror High, but it has no relation to this. Right, film. right. It's a, and and actually, it's funny. The whole it, it, if you think about it, the title actually has a kind of a double effect in this actually too, based on when you get to the ending of this movie. So it's like it's kind of like a it, it, it stays meta till the very last scene actually. Yeah, it really does. So yeah. The, the entire movie is kind of self-referencing and self-parodying. And it's also parodying 
that's hard to say. Par- I'm, yeah, I know. <laughs> right, I'm not parodying. Parodying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of poking fun at uh, movie making itself. Right. So, and we've seen other horror films that do that. I'm trying to think of the one. There's one from the 70s that's real popular. I can't remember the name of it right now. But it's it's like this, too. They're making a horror movie. And then pe- real people start dying on the set of the movie. It's It's been done before. But, yeah. uh, but this one, it was kind of neat because it's kind of done in the era of slashers. So it's kind of making fun of the movies that it's already like closely time related to. So it's not right. like a movie now in 2018 making fun of 80s slashers. It's like a movie from the 1980s making fun of it. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, like at the time, that must have been, people must have been like, whoa, wait a minute, you know? <laughs> like, what's going on? Wait a minute, this is kind of what's going on now, and you guys are making fun of it already? You know, that's like... And it kind of makes fun of the complex plots of those slashers as well, because, you know, they always had the crazy twist endings, and uh, right, so this movie right. makes fun of that by doing the same kind of things. Yeah, there must be about 50 twists if you think about it. Almost every scene some sort of has some sort of like twist element to it. Uh, you know, whether it be like, oh, we faked you out. This is a, a film, movie killer. Oh, this is a flashback. Or, oh, this is someone in a wig now. You know, it's like, it's, you know, playing a different character. And then they mock that, that like they're just cheap budget. Like they, the, the stereotypes are there too. You know, it's like the, uh, like they stereotype the characters while also stereotyping the real personas of the characters. Like you got the sleazy producer with got the, the hel- most hilarious briefcase that consists of a phone and a tape recorder. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah, it's, and even his, his like name is like Slearak. Yeah, oh, he's great. A, he is so yeah, good. Yeah, oh, Alex Rocco is great. And I had a, a funny connection later on with Alex Rocco. We'll get to. But, um, yeah, he, he was always one of my favorites, too. But And it's just, it's like, so it's like the, you're making fun of the, the, the actor that thinks he's too good for it and he has to leave. And uh, the special effects guy that, like, has come up with the most elaborate effects and he's they're never using them and he's always, like, kind of butthurt about it yeah. it's like it's like it's like so many so many like uh you know like things you're familiar with that, that have been made fun of over the years that it's almost like it almost kind of like it, wor- it makes it work so well though i think that that's really what it is and, and i'm sure yeah. there are no strangers to the actual film industry types <laughs> they probably oh, right. based off all, all this on so uh, yeah, but there are some really cool cameos in this film, which yeah. is which are neat. Uh, I'm not even I can't even say cameos. They're not really cameos. They're actually stars in the film. Uh, yeah, George Clooney's film debut right. was this movie. Yeah, and he is uh, super young, <laughs> super young yeah. in this movie, and you could tell he's already on his way to being a star. He's got the look already. And he and it, it, that's what happens in the movie, yeah. too. He he leaves the set because he gets cast in a in a big series, which is kind of funny because of just not many years later, he I guess right. Oh no, no, it was about ten years. Or no, wait, ER was ninety four, right? I think started. So he yeah. wasn't that far wasn't off in real life. Off, just yeah. ten years. Yeah, just about ten years, nine nine ten years from his actual. Uh, big break in a tv series so yeah yeah the uh the other big one you you'll really recognize is maury oh, yeah. mccormick who of course played marcia brady and she was awesome in this she's stuff. great she, like went f- she went from like this like look like a by the book cop to starting to almost like get off on yeah. the whole <laughs> she was like laughing and opening her blouse or her shirt more and like blood was smeared over her and then she's eating a giant chili dog it was like what's going on yeah her oh i love seeing her because i've yeah i didn't really know her from anything other than the brady bunch so right it's right. a very non-brady role in this no movie. yeah she's not was, in it, was, it a it lot definitely... but it's no yeah but the way they made her character was like almost like you expected all of a sudden her football to go flying in her face you yeah. know and hit it and like <laughs> But um, yeah, and it's like it's just like she's like such a comical character, but she doesn't start off that way. That's that's what's so funny to watch. watch well, those who haven't seen it yet, go watch this movie. Just watch her in the very opening scene, and then what she's like by the end of the movie. It's just yeah. hilarious. And then uh, you had the uh, great Al Fan, who has done a ton of t- he did a ton of television in the eighties and early nineties. Um, I was looking through his IMDb page. He's just got a ton of stuff he did. You'll probably just recognize him if you were a big fan of '80s and '90s television. He's still doing television, actually. So he's not—he's not a household name as much as his uh, brother Ceiling. Though. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <know>. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was but, coming. Yeah. Come on. But if you like him, you might be a fan fan. Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> uh, there are two fantastic montages in this movie. I want to talk about again. Yeah. I saw that fan. Fantastic. The, the, well, the first one's not really a montage, but it, no, the yeah. soundtrack is in a way. It's weird. It's so the, there's a sequence where the biology teacher is being murdered, and 
earlier you had seen him uh, teaching class and they were talking about dissecting a frog. So then when they get to the point where this teacher is about to be dissected, you hear his quotes from the previous scene like remixed oh, right. into yeah. the soundtrack. It was so cool. Like, yeah. It was. It almost reminded me of uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. There's a sequence in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles right, where, at the end. where Steve Martin got mad at the rental counter or whatever he's like you're messing with the wrong guy and later in the soundtrack, oh right that one that you, part yeah, yeah you can hear him go you're messing with the wrong guy and it's mixed into the soundtrack it, that's what it reminded me of but it's weird it's like the the teacher's own quotes are coming back in the music it was really strange but the best one <laughs> oh my god this was the that weirdest song scene i've ever seen so you have two of the characters uh having relations uh making yeah. love <laughs> to the glow of welding lights it's, yeah. it's the weirdest thing. It's basically they keep cutting to these people out their w- side their window welding, which is flashing these blue welding lights, and then it cuts back to the people making love, and then yeah. it cuts back to the welders, and it goes on like this forever. And I'm like, what am I watching? This is but the- that song. Yes. Oh my god. And there's like that this was- song playing. Oh my god. It, you gotta see it. It's the weirdest, yeah. weirdest thing. I was, I kept watching it like. Really? Did, was the yeah. editor doing this? Was he like, like I don't understand. That ha- that may have been seriously the biggest '80s montage I've ever seen in terms of like the most thing that signified what '80s <laughs> movies had in it. That song was like so. It was like so so cheesy. It was unbelievable. Yeah, but yet it was like you couldn't help but like enjoy it. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it was it was bizarre. You need to. You, you need might to have to that. put a clip of that at the end. Oh my god! You gosh. might have to snag a little clip of that, <laughs> even though it has to. nothing to do with horror. Or that song. <laughs> and there are also but, some great quotes in here. My personal yes. favorite, <laughs> a little PG right here. But uh, yeah, mine too. By the way, uh, the girl says, <laughs> "Well, would you care to walk around in the scene with your schlong hanging out? Only in your case, darling, it would be a schlort." <laughs> <laughs> that name Schlort, I could, that was it great. Just cracks me up. Yeah, like that sounds like that. That Schlort almost is like one of those sound effects you'd see in like a comic book. Like if Wolverine's claws came out and slice something, it'd be like Schlort. Like I'm surprised somebody, they didn't you know? catch on. That's such a great quote. It is. It's like it's a total like thing. You know, it's like Schlort. <laughs> and it's probably it was like it's almost like too too. It's a pun pun version. It's like too ahead of its time. Maybe maybe That's so. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but yeah, that one was that one was good. That that ca- that character was just good in general. But yeah, yeah, so they um, yeah, it was just it was kind of uh, you know, and they, you know, it's like not to give away. I mean, not that this movie has you know is you know it's old enough that we give spoilers. But well, you know, we don't we don't need to go into the whole ending twist. But it is is this definitely interesting to watch this movie to get the t- the ending uh, because it's like I was like whoa what the <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> it's a- overall I just think it's a fun movie it's it doesn't take itself too seriously it's not particularly scary it, it, no it def- it's definitely horror comedy yeah, it's on it's comedy. definitely horror comedy yeah but um but I just think it's I, I picked this one because I, I just remembered it being like really fun and it's it's kind of an upbeat fun uh movie and I, I like that the, you have the kind of cool cameos you can laugh at with George Clooney. And uh, Maureen McCormick, and so I, yeah, I, I just, I don't know why, I kind of, I just like this movie for some reason. Yeah, and you get, you learn words like schlort. So, <laughs> That's <yeah>. right. <laughs> we, we need to just start trying to throw it in there, in our group, in our circle of friends, and just see if anyone picks up on it. You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, what else do you have to say about this one, Brian? I mean, I, there's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of the plot because it, it's just. You have to see it. It's hard to describe in audio, you know, the different yeah. fake outs and things like that. That's something you just have to watch to see all of I mean, them. yeah. I mean, there are some, you know, there, there's there's levels of horror comedies. You know, there's some that are co- more comedy than horror, of course, where the, the, the goal is comedy, making f- complete fun of horror. But this one kind of tried to do, like, it literally tried to get right down the middle in the line. Like, they, they tried to have some legit scary moments. But there was this whole tongue-in-cheek atmosphere with it the whole time, the whole meta feel to it. So I think it did a great job of giving you enough of both, actually. I mean, right, though, it would never I, – I don't think I was ever ever a moment where I'd even say, oh, that could be kind of scary. But, um, you know, and then, you know, I always look at it with that, that extra little 
glance because I know we're kind of jaded, especially when you do a horror podcast, you know, you see a lot of horror movies. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's so it's only so many certain things could scare you at this point. But that one, like, you know, it definitely wasn't any scary moments. But at, at some point, slashers always have that, like, also, like, natural little, like, comedic thing when there's a good, like, kill. But in this one, it was just like, I think it just walked right down that line perfectly. It had a lot of fun in it. It's just definitely a fun horror movie to see and it it's definitely something that when you get like i mean right now yes it's it's not streaming free you'd have to you have to purchase it but i mean well, i think it was like 2.99 yeah or something on amazon prime definitely worth that and if i think if i don't know if there's a good like a shout factory release of it or anything but i'd be something i would definitely pick up down the road to have my collection because it's 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 definitely something i would watch repeatedly you know yeah, I liked. I really just liked all the fake outs. This movie, yeah. like, you know, I've I've said before when we were going through the Hellraiser franchise that I didn't like all the dream sequences in that one movie or whatever. But this one just like doubles down on the fake outs so much, and they do it yeah. in such varied ways that I, I just thought it was hilarious. Like they go, you never know exactly what you're watching in this film. I just thought that was kind of cool. Right, right. Oh, you know, we almost forgot a. Uh, uh, a uh, uh, p- a person in that was Philip McKeon's first role. You know, of course, oh, yeah. Nancy McKeon's yes. McKeon's um, uh, brother, and who was also um, played Alice's uh, son on the the show Alice. That's right. Yeah. And um, and here's another connection. So speaking of Nancy McKeon, of course, Joe on Facts of Life, there was another connection to Facts of Life in here. So George Clooney had a stint on Facts of Life along with Alex Rocco as Joe Polchinet Pol. Polnich- oh my god okay i can speak polnicek's father so uh-huh. you have another little uh, uh little uh facts of life connection there cool which i thought that was kind of funny yeah. and it's funny because you know like this time philip mckeon was was in a movie with alex rocco too so there's my little nonsense trivia that nobody could care less about <laughs> <laughs> but. all right well yeah you guys check that one out that one's if you haven't seen that one it's, it's kind of a fun one if you're kind of tired of the typical 80s slasher that that's kind of a cool one because it kind of pokes fun at all that and uh, it's entertaining. It's a it's a really entertaining little movie. Uh, but what did we have for our beer pairing this week, Brian? So this one was a little tough. And you know how I usually go through my um, my uh, beer pairings. I you know I'll Google like the, the the type of movie or the title of the movie, and then put beer after it. And I try and get some kind of like connection. But I thought if I put high school and beer, I don't know if that would be necessarily come up with yeah. good results. And God knows what I'd, I'd be watched then. Like, what is this guy trying to sell? High school, beer to high schoolers? But um, anyway, so but I was so I started to read. I figured I I went a different way this time. I decided to read the the actual full on Wikipedia synopsis of this, and I realized that it was the movie company in the film. The fictional movie company was Cosmic Pictures. So that's where I went, and I actually found a beer called Cosmic Truth. Which once you see the movie, you'll know how appropriate that title kind of is because there's with all the different twists and the things going on um and it's by a resurgence brewing company which again kind of has a little bit of connection there if you think about it um it's an apa 4.3 percent and it's the sessionable cosmic truth is a little lighter on the palate than some of our ipas with the same characteristics pineapple tropical fruit and citrus profile you love from your favorite new zealand hops and it says they brewed it to be a better all day option than the standard Vermont style IPA. So it seems like a basic, very light IPA, but an IPA. But so I figured that would be pretty good for this film. Yeah, that's a good good pairing because it's light hearted too. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and now I and then thinking back, I should look for a beer named Schlort. Yeah, I do. I do know there's one called Schploing, <laughs> but that, <laughs> there's a beer called Schploing. Well, if we ever make Schlort. a beer, a Civil Gore beer, we'll call it Schlort. Oh yes, that would be a a, a Schlort session ale. Yeah. yeah <laughs> All right, so our six degrees of decapitation. We're finally going to tell you the answer to that long lost question. Yes, how do that you... people have been waited with bated <laughs> yes. breath? How do you connect there. Costas Mandylor to Bob Costas? Well, <laughs> Costas Mandylor was in Five Thirteen with Gary Dorden, and Gary Dorden was in The Paper with Bob Costas. Yes, I'm sure he played himself in that. Yeah. Right, Bob Costas. I don't remember yeah. The Paper very well. Yeah, I'm sure. But, um, it was a while ago, but yeah, so I assume he played himself in that. So this week, we got another little name <laughs> pun of stuff course. going on here. Uh, we're going to ask you to connect Pepper Martin to Barry Pepper. Yes. <laughs> so. and, and, ba- and Barry Pepper, I'm sorry, but I, I know this is, is going to be a little off topic, but I always crack up because um, Barry Pepper played Roger Maris in that movie 61 that Billy Crystal did. Yeah. And I still remember I'd always – me and my friend uh, Eric would always joke because like we saw this interview he did and he's always like – 
He's like, you know, you gotta watch uh, my new film, 61. Yeah, it's wonderful. It, it's got a... It, it, uh, Roger Maris played by a wonderful actor, Barry Pepper. It's great in this film. You gotta love it. Barry Pepper. And he just kept saying it that way. He must have repeated Barry Pepper's name about <laughs> ten times, and I couldn't stop laughing. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's Billy Crystal. Oh. My bad Billy Crystal impersonation, too. But uh, so you got you got a two for one there. You got a little story and a bad impersonation. Yeah. What again? What Civil Gore is known for? That's what we're all about. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So we'll be knack back. Oh, we'll be knack. Oh yeah, I'm getting tired. We could be knack. Yeah, we, we could, could be knack. Oh, we'll be back next week with another school related movie. Hey, if you guys have any suggestions for our Back to Ghoul series, a favorite horror movie set in a school or academic environment that you want us to cover, let us know. We've covered fan movies before we will do it again and of course keep checking us out on facebook gmail instagram twitter we're on all the major things we've got you know our podcasts are even on youtube so subscribe to our youtube channel and you get all the podcasts in audio form on youtube which kind of defeats the purpose but whatever yeah but also subscribe to our YouTube channel anyway because hope, that's where we're eventually going to archive all the Halloween Horror Night content that we put up there. Because my plan is to, you know, we're going to shoot some live videos to you guys. But also I want to edit in everything together because we're going to actually use my regular camcorder um, to get a lot of stuff. But also um, we're going to get some social media uh, videos. Um, so I'm going to eventually edit it all together to a nice like big recap piece hopefully. And so that so definitely I'm not sure when that would come out. Probably wouldn't be for another few weeks after we get back. Um but yeah, so that's going to be my plan. So I definitely want to do that cuz cuz our goal was anyway this year, especially cuz uh, especially when haunt season starts to do a lot more videos. Like I'm going to try and uh I was actually talking to Julie, we may still try and um uh, towards the beginning of October, check out the the uh, haunted graveyard at Lake Compound. Which is fantastic, and there's a couple of good haunts around here. I'm gonna try and do so. Hopefully, we'll get a bunch of uh, good video stuff. And Tim's always got some great haunts near him, and his his dad just puts on a fantastic uh, Halloween event. That that probably be some good footage on. So yeah, so yeah, and I think I'm gonna try to hit Scarewinds this this year uh in october Pooh man so um um yeah <laughs> hopefully Pooh man will be there but yeah i'm definitely gonna i'll definitely provide some content from there as well so uh look for that cool. all right guys we will see you back here next week take care and schlort you later